happening, but he followed through with funding to help others turn a good vision into reality. This he did with government, this he did with Ireland. The idea was we, 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 we showed them the light. To date, Atlantic has invested $1.2 billion in Ireland alone. Over 750 million of that has gone into third level education. And the resulting new population of highly qualified postgraduates was undoubtedly a key driver of the Celtic Tiger economy. As with all his grants, there was no publicity, no names on buildings, only a desire to promote opportunity through education, all the more necessary in troubled economic times. Ireland is subject to good times and bad times and uh, tougher times are, are coming uh, and uh, that, that, that just requires more support. The Irish public have often proven their interest in seeing wrongdoing in corporate and political life being exposed. Up to now, tribunals set up by the state have been the way it's done. But now a private group is about to begin its investigations too, with retired judge Fergus Flood at the head of its board. Feeney's involvement in Irish politics continued when, in 2005, Atlantic funded the establishment of a Centre for Public Inquiry an independent watchdog charged with uncovering corruption in public life. Well, the concept of, of citizen watchdog organizations is kind of unexceptional in a country like the United States and in many other countries as well, in what you would say are mature uh, democratic societies. I think uh, the idea of the center was to, uh, to hold uh, uh, government uh, accountable for things that happened because they, uh, they call the shots. The person they hired to head up the centre seemed a logical choice. Frank Connolly was an established journalist whose work on corruption had contributed to the establishment of the Flood and Morris Tribunals. We had uh, a fellow, uh, Frank Connolly, who uh, was, uh, I think, recognised as one of the uh, very good investigative uh, journalists here in Ireland. I think, in, in quite frankly, this was just seen as, as, as a strange uh, group to be, to be um, watching ourselves. And I suppose if you, if you were to take it, um, uh, if, if in Paris uh, an organisation funded by a group of Irish people was set up to start involving them, what would the French think? You felt you were entitled to fund such an operation in Ireland, and you yes. felt it was worthwhile. Yes, if the if the centre had ever was ever able to carry out the uh, goals that we had set out, uh, it would have been worthwhile. I think there was mentions that we were planning to target individuals in our investigations, which of course was absolutely absurd. We had never suggested any such thing. We never did any such thing. What we said we were going to do was examine matters of public importance. This was the centre's first report, and many more, they say, are on the way on a range of controversies. In the beginning, the centre produced two well-received reports on planning problems in Trim and on the Corrib gas controversy. But soon, there were allegations emerging that seriously threatened to undermine the independence of the centre. Frank Connolly, brother of Niall Connolly, one of the so-called Columbia Three, was alleged to have travelled to Columbia on a false passport. The Taoiseach met with Feeney. I and Mike McDowell asked a question, um, you know, what was this really about? And I think we gave him a flavour. It was no question of attacking or lecturing him because he wasn't that kind of a person. He was not to do whatever he wanted with his money. Uh, but I think we gave him uh, an honest assessment uh, of, of the view in Leinster House uh, and no more than that. Undoubtedly, the Centre for Public Inquiry aspires to be an organ of public opinion. But equally, it is one uh, which, in subversive hands, has the capacity to gravely undermine the authority of the state. I mean, the, the way we've seen Leinster House was uh, that we're going to investigate um, decisions that were made and planning other things. Well, you know, we see that Board Panala uh, and the courts are the places that you do that, um, uh, you know, not ad hoc committees. Citing the interests of national security, Minister for Justice Michael McDowell released Garda documents to the Irish newspapers, claiming to prove that Connolly had travelled to Colombia. All I have done is to give to the Irish Independent, at its request, a copy of the forgery so that people in this country can determine where the truth lies. 
Even though the DPP found no evidence against him, pressure intensified on Connolly to say where he had been at the time in question. Did you ask him where he was for those couple of weeks? Uh, probably, or if not myself, I, I said, f find out where Frank was for a couple of those couple of weeks. And you got no answer that... Well, he, uh, he, he didn't answer that. It then became uh, a, a matter of credibility for, for the organisation, and that was a very painful and difficult episode that I think uh, upset Chuck Feeney a lot, I have to say. We hadn't researched f far back far enough, and uh, as I say, we were surprised by what we discovered, and uh, uh, then, then we, you know, we tried to carry the can for that, because, uh, look, what, what you don't discover is your fault, too. Are you in a position now, or do you think you would be in a position ever, to say where you were at the time and, and finally end all that speculation well, I, I, and smear? Well, again, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's my position. I've already said to you that this, this Garda investigation, for what it was, is finished. That's what we've been told. So it's, it's nonsense, in my view. Uh, for me to be trying to, to explain things based on an investigation that was never justified in the first place. If Chuck Feeney had have uh, stood up at any stage and had have articulated that this is what he, he wanted it for, um, people would have accepted that. He never did that. And I can only give you Bertie Hearn's view of that. Uh, my view of that is um, he, he never had researched this through. That's my view. In a way, could it be said that he was um, railroaded out, not by you, but perhaps by the government or individuals within the government? Uh, well, that, that certainly is an assessment someone could make. Elements in power, um, and not only that, but including the former Taoiseach, I think, didn't like the idea of where this was going to go and where it potentially could go. And if you look back now, what's happened in the last couple of years, we've discovered corruption on a scale that none, none of us ever envisaged uh, would emerge or, or even existed at the time. And I think that's partly the tragedy of, of all of us. Atlantic withdrew its funding and the centre was closed in December 2005. The sad thing about this is that the cause of the watchdog organisation was set back as a result of, of what happened and it will be some years I think before it can be revived. Chuck Feeney's philosophy of giving while living is central to everything he does. His belief that it's better to give money away now has changed the lives of millions, and his work isn't over yet. Feeney, an extremely shy man, recently made the difficult decision to sacrifice his anonymity and cooperate on a biography with Conor O'Cleary. He did it because he wants his message of giving while living to inspire others. My sense is that he's getting to a stage in his life now where as I think all of us do when we get a little bit older. You ask yourself, what has the meaning of your life been and what have you been able to contribute? I sense that the most important thing for him now is to spread the gospel of giving while living and to influence more people who have money to give it away and to give it away wisely. We are uh, what we call a spend down foundation, which means that we are going to, over the next nine years or thereabouts, uh, to spend down the assets of the, uh, the foundation, which uh, would be in excess of three, three billion dollars. In order to meet the deadline of spending our endowment out of existence by 2016, we have to give away a million dollars every day of the year, 365 days a year. There's logic in, uh, in making things happen now, uh, especially if, uh, if now uh, uh, there are things out there that are necessary. Nowadays, Chuck Feeney still travels to see the work that Atlantic Philanthropies supports in seven countries around the world, in projects on ageing, children and youth, population health and reconciliation and human rights. And I'm not here to tell anybody what they should do with their money. If you make your money, you do what you want with it. Uh, 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 but uh, I think there is an obligation, certainly, for the, the, the haves to, to reach out and to look at, see what they can do. Any, any money that people give to, to, uh, to any, any good cause, as long as it's well, well managed, is worthwhile. I just hope that... Um, that people will uh, sort of try it, you'll like it.
Today, with the same relentless drive and attention to detail that made him one of the world's richest men, Chuck Feeney is now giving away the last of his billions. I wouldn't put him happy in the sense of content. I would say he's happy with what he's been able to do and wishes it would be more. And he's probably just as restless and consumed with trying to make it better now uh, as he was in 1962. He wants to be in the center of things. He wants to be where the action is. And if he has to get on an airplane and fly to five different airports, he'll go. My husband said to him one time, why don't you just have a conference call instead of, you know, spending a day and a half in the airport to get wherever. I think my dad would wish he could live till he's 160, if not more, to keep involved. And he tells me how pissed he is that he's not going to be able to see how things turn out here or there. He wants to, to keep going. He'll never retire. I doubt it. He couldn't. He can't. I don't know, maybe the, maybe the Lord's word is uh, the decider on that. The poor are always with us. You know, you'll never run out of people you can help.